Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. I've shown previous videos on how to hunt trick larvae in like expensive marauder setups, but I wanted to show something for you guys who are alpha clones, you guys who are free-to-play players, and maybe you want to have a bit low-budget uh, kind of setup. This is a 125mm Naga fit, and this can be used to hunt trick larvians. And for you guys who don't know what trick larvian hunting is, it's basically, you can think of it in certain systems that are relatively close to these taken over Pochven systems you can see them by these red dots here like high stake systems that are quite close to these guys they have the potential of spawning these triglavian wormholes and if a triglavian wormhole spawns in that system then it'll make so that triglavian fleets will spawn in that system and you can hunt these guys and when you destroy them you salvage them and you can sell the salvage for very good isk so with this setup i would say you earn about 50 to 100 million isk and it depends a lot on how lucky you are sometimes you can find a lot of like good triglavian sometimes you find quite crappy triglavian Triglavians, so you maybe if it's a bad, you'll be more towards 50 million isk an hour. If it's really good, you can get 100 million plus an hour. But this is something that I think is really nice because it is quite safe, quite chill, and also it's very cheap as well. So if you lose it, it's not the whole world because you can earn this whole setup back very quickly by doing this whole uh, isk making method right here. I've uh, like I've done a lot of testing now with this ship right here, and it has actually earned back this ship like multiple times over. And this guy I'm using, who I'll demonstrate this in, he's only got alpha clone skills trained, so this is no like. Oh, I'm using a max omega clone skills like my main. This guy's only trained alpha clone skills, so it'll be all right. But he has got good alpha clone skills. Just keep that in mind. But what I'm trying to say is this is very possible for the free players, the alpha clones. So this is something that I think is also a good way to like potentially plex your accounts. Say you want to like, you know, okay, I want to find some way to do isk making in high sec. And maybe the abyss is a little bit too hard for you. This is a good way, I would say, to plex your account because you can definitely do that as well. So let's get into it. The way this works is that we've got two fits right here. One is the combat fit right here. This is the combat fit. And we've got these rail guns that have really good range. So this is makes it very easy for us to kill the Triglavians because we have so good range. So even though, I mean, our DPS is not crazy, but we're able to pull so good range that we're going to snipe them really good. And we'll have so good transversal that when we're really far away from the Triglavians that we'll be hitting very good applied damage as well. So you've got two ammo types. One is the antimatter, which is the close range ammo. And one is the uranium, which is like the mid range of the long range ammo so this is how it's going to work but this fit i've got right now is a salvage fit so this is why i would fit into then to when i want to salvage stuff later but either way let's get started we want to find a triglavian wormhole i've made a video before how to find triglavian wormholes where you look in systems that are close to these uh these like potra systems these red systems right here if you want to know how to sort it by color you go here and type uh in the cog security status they'll make them red or blue so you can then look in systems that are pretty close to these ones. So like, for example, you could add a waypoint here, add a waypoint here. But there's also another easier way if you want to get into it straight away. And that is to go on this website here called Triglavian Track or exactly Edengom.space. These guys are really good for doing this because basically what's happened here is that people have then encountered Triglavians and then they posted them here. So just keep this in mind. This is submitted by players. So it maybe is not always accurate or maybe that someone has like, you know, it's expired or something. But for the most part, I've always been like, it's always been accurate info here. I've never had any problems with that info being wrong here. So this is a really good way to also find Triglavians quickly. If you are a bit lazy and you can't be bothered to have to find them yourself. So if you want to take it in a system then, which is pretty close. So we're in the forge right now. So we want to take a system that's pretty close. So if we look here, region that is in the forge 20 minutes ago, or Tsela, but this is low sec. So maybe Hentogaira. Hentogaira, I think is actually pretty far away from us. If we go here and look in the map, so yeah, Hento Gaira. Yeah, it's pretty far away. Let's see if we can find a close system. Maybe Kusumonmon, because Citadel is a region very close to the forge. Let's see now. Yeah, this is a good system right here. So we'll go to Kusumonmon. And before we go in there with the Naga, we're going to go in here just to double check that the wormhole is there. So you could actually fit a Cobra launcher to the Naga itself. But I've got this Mini right here. This ship, which I called Mini. It's a very fast Atron. Very cheap fit right here. And I use it just to go around and travel to scan the wormhole if there is one there. So just that the, if there is a wormhole, we find a special Triglavian wormhole that we know 100% that there's going to be Triglavian spawning right there. And you can think of it that there are two types of Triglavian hunting that you've got right here. You've got one type of Triglavian hunting, which is the initial phase, which is the wormhole siege is what I call it. Where you find this wormhole, and if no one's destroyed, there's like there's this guarding fleet of Triglavians at the wormhole. So you have to destroy them, because if you don't destroy them, then they won't spawn so many Triglavians in the system. So there, you've got this wormhole fleet that's guarding there, but once you destroy them, then they won't spawn anymore at the wormhole. What will happen though is when you've destroyed the wormhole fleet, then they will be respawning so many Triglavians out the, in the system, and then you'll have a very good time hunting the 
a roaming Raznaborg fleet is what I call them, or the recon fleets. They're like the patrols, because you can think of it like the law here is that the Triglavians, that they've got like these recon fleets called the Raznaborg people, and they're going around there like sort of scanning for resources and scanning around, and they're looking for different types of intel. They're looking for different intel on us. So that's basically what we're going to be doing here. We're going to hunt them. But if we haven't destroyed the wormhole fleet, then we have to do that first because then they won't spawn so many Raznaborg recon ships in the in the system. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to go to this Kusumun one and I'm going to scan here with this corporate launcher to see where the wormhole is. And not only is it good for just in general knowing that there is a wormhole here, but also it's good because I can then make a bookmark because we're going to be using a lot of bookmarks for this. So this is a good way to get acquainted with the bookmark system of Eve Online because it is actually very useful in general when you're in Nullsec or whatever. So we're going to be launching the core probes here. Move a little bit here. Come on, move. Atron, move, please. Hello, there we go. Okay, move. Then we go and look here for the wormhole. I'm guessing it's this one in the center. And one thing that is quite important here, and it's not super important, but it would be very useful, is that you have your bookmarks visible in the overview. So it could be that you've got maybe this like turned off. Make sure you click this. So it's like the all these eyes here are green. And then also if you press control O, if we press uh, control O, then if you look here, you'll see this here. If we just turn this off, we won't see anything. Control O, you see this right here, right? So make sure sensor overlay is on and make sure the personal bookmarks are on. So don't make sure they're not grayed out like this. Make sure they're on like this. So that'll make it so that you can see bookmarks in space because we'll be using a lot of bookmarks to kite in and out. Like we'll be jumping in and out, warping in and out of these uh, these uh, like uh, Triglavian encounters so that we'll be able to keep range very easily. Because if you were an Omega clone, this would be a lot easier because you could then put a micro jump drive on your Naga. But since we're going in an Alpha clone, we can't do that. So we're going to be then relying on using warping in and out technique. Just warping and like, you know, we'll make a bookmark a few thousand kilometers away, warp to that and then warp back in at 100 kilometers. So we have keep, kept range from these triglavians you'll see it'll be a lot more clear when we've actually encountered them one thing to keep in mind here is that when you're warping around you will find triglavians at planets where like these Raznaborg fleets and just this is just a general rule remember this all the time when you are in the systems with triglavians and you're in a kiting ship that relies on being far away not tanking the brute force never warp to a planet at zero always warp to planets at 100 because the thing is they can spawn Triglavian fleets of planets. And if you up to zero, you can lose your ship because they will wreck you. Because that's exactly what has happened to me. If we look here, I got absolutely wrecked because I accidentally warped to a planet at zero. I was not thinking. And then I just warped there and there happened to be a fleet that was there. And I just got annihilated. So just keep in mind, never warp to planets at zero and also the sun at zero. But okay, we can see here we warp to this uh, wormhole right here. And we can see that this there's some uh, Triglavians here. So there's a guarding fleet. Mark the wormhole. To save it as a bookmark. So you got wormhole here. And we'll also edit this to see OFY. We'll put the code name here. And we want to move before they actually capture us. OFY wormhole. There we go. Okay, now we'll be going to Urlen or back to where we were before. And they are already on the case. You see here the Triglavians, they are pretty, uh, they're pretty vigilant right here. But we marked the wormhole OFY. And the reason why we've got this OFY right here is just to say this wormhole despawns because they don't have such a short lifespan. I think it's like 12 or 24 hours. They don't have so long lifespan. So you can always just go to the system and if you see a signature that's not OFY, like if you have to rescan it, then you don't even have to bother scanning it. If there's no OFY or OFY like signature in the system, then you know that, okay, it's not the wormhole is not there anymore. So we'll just go back to Jita. I can know this route off by heart since I spend a lot of time in Jita or the Jita region, the forge. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to start off with sieging the wormhole. Then after that, we're going to try to see if we can hunt a simple Raznaborg ro roaming recon fleet to show you guys how it works. Okay, so we got the Naga right here and it is ready to roll. I just need to put my 10M in Afterburner because I forgot that. And basically, this will be perfectly fine with Alpha Clone skills. Again, my character has an Alpha Clone, like is an only trained Alpha Clone skills right here. The only thing is you need a basic implant right here, which is this uh, 2002 implant right here. This uh, is makes it so that you can actually fit the uh, the large shield extender right here because this is nice. It gives you a bit of a buffer just in case you were to screw up. You at least have some buffer to react. So before you go out, just double check that you have all these like items in your cargo because it can sometimes happen that you miss them. I've done it myself. 
I don't need this bomb and play right here. But make sure you have three expanded cargo holds. You'll need that for later when you're going to haul the loot back. And also make sure you have eight salvages in here. I mean, you don't need eight, but it's nice to have eight for max efficiency. Because basically, we're going to be salvaging the wrecks later by replacing these rail guns with the salvages. Also, make sure you have two MTUs. These are good to have. Very good to have two of them as well. Because sometimes when we're kiting these Triglavians, they're going to be very far away. Sometimes we'll have to place two down since they'll sometimes be out of range of the MTU. They'll just cover more distance. And then make sure you have your some frantics boosters right here. These are very good. The synth frantics, make sure you have that one. Because it's good because it improves our optimal range by 6%. And they only cost 1 million and they last for about 40 minutes with the current alpha clone skills I've got. And then make sure you also have your appropriate scripts right here. So we're actually going to be using a range script. And we're going to have three optimal ranges right here. But you can also have some tracking speed scripts as well, just in case. But we're going to primarily be using targeting range and three optimal range scripts. That's what we're going to be using right here. And then also make sure you have a good supply of antimatter and uranium charge. And make sure it's called Iron Navy as well, because they do a lot more damage. It's totally worth it. I remember when I was an Alpha Clone, I was thinking that, nah, this is not worth it using it. But now it is definitely worth it to go with the faction ammunition. Now we're whooping to the system, of course, from one one. Okay, so now that we're here, what I do first is that when I'm in the system that I want to do some Triglavian hunting in, is that I just mark a station and then save it as like, I don't know, restock maybe. Restock like that. So this is where I can like restock my stuff if I want to just dump loot and that kind of stuff. Okay, so now we've approached the restock station where I'm just going to dump all of my uh, items that I'm not going to use in combat right here, which will be all these items of salvages and the expanded cargo holds. So we'll just take all the salvages and put them here and the car expanded cargo hole. So we have two MTUs on our ammunition and that's all we're going to have when we're fighting the Triglavians. Okay, so we've marked the wormhole in the bookmark right here. Make sure in the bookmark, whoop to this at 100. Don't whoop to the probe scan, whoop to the bookmark. And then whoop to 100, okay? And this is important. Have the people and places tab up here is very useful. Uh, you can also press L to look at local locations. I prefer the people and places because you just can add them. You have all these buttons accessible right here, but you very well could press L as well. Okay, so warp to this, then warp all 100. Click add location and type warp out. Okay, type warp out and just keep this ready to submit here. Also have your inventory up as well. These are two things that are quite important that I forget in the beginning. I mean, this to deploy my MTU, because I often forget to deploy my MTU, and then when I if I don't deploy it straight away, then I'll have to do it later, and I'll take a lot more time, because we're going to be kiting, so we're going to be at long distances. So this will have to work over time, the MTU. Okay, so keep an eye on the distance here. When it starts becoming 10,000 kilometers or lower, then hit the submit button on the warp out, because this is where you're going to be aligned to. So compress now. There, go. Warp out. Okay, good. Okay, now we've warped in at 100 right here, and you can see that they're quite far away. So what we're going to be doing here is then locking up. We're also going to have to deploy this as well, mobile tractor unit, and approach the the approach the warp out location. Lock up the smallest stuff to the biggest stuff. The small, and we have to also activate our modules right here. Lock up the smallest stuff to the biggest stuff, and about after 100 kilometers, uranium is the optimal ammo. Below 100 kilometers, it is not good to use. It's better to use the antimatter. So we'll start shooting here. We're also being tracking disrupted, so it will be better to use then the uh, the uh, uranium a little bit longer range. So we're going to be just shooting this guy right here. This, do the smallest to biggest, smallest to biggest. That's how it's going to work. Uh, we can even switch to Kaldari Navy antimatter, antimatter right now, since he's getting a bit closer. And have your afterburn on as much as you can. It helps a bit in pulling distance. And another way to improve tracking is to look get uh, like a zoom out, and you can see here we sniped him like that. And you see these guys right here, you just, to improve tracking, you just look at them and then double click sort of directly away from them. So you can get the optimal transversal, like just directly away. So you get perfect hit right there. Uh, there's a Raznamog tangling and ghosting probably should go next. And this guy, you'll notice also the Raznamog guys, they'll die a lot quicker than the normal ones without Raznamog right here. So it could actually happen here that this guy is going to get too close to us. So we might have to warp out, but it's okay. Don't panic. It's all right. We just walk back in at 100. And that's why we'll be making a lot of bookmarks. You'll see this. We'll be making a lot of bookmarks. They'll be to our warp out location. You can see our warp out is over there. We'll be having bookmarks all over the place. So then it'll be easier for us to warp in and out of this. 
Okay, there we go. This guy is wrecked right here. About uh, 80 and 70 kilometers, they start doing damage. It, and that's why the large shield extender is nice because it gives us a bit of a buffer to like react preemptively in case, you know, stuff were to go south. And you can see here, the mobile tractor unit is pulling stuff in because they're going to be keep, they're going to be spawning from this wormhole right here. They're going to keep trying to go to us. Then we're going to be like the, this, they're going to sort of be, uh, wrecks are going to be accumulating along here. So that's why it's good to put the mobile tractor unit around this location right here. And you can also see his velocity as well. Well, it's only 300. We're going actually even faster than it's afterburner. So people might think that, oh, it's silly that I've got an afterburner in right here. But it's actually is good but sometimes when they're going quite slowly. So then you can sort of pull a little bit of range as well. And we might want to get a bit better transversal since we were getting some bad hits at one point. So we'll just double click some space to create a perfect line. So we're perfectly going away from this guy. You can just keep there. Because you can think of it like our turrets have to turn. If he's approaching at an angle, they have to turn a bit more. So if we're going directly away from him, then we'll have to, uh, we'll have an easier time hitting. So now we can spin to spawn another we'll spawn in right here. Galdari Navy Uranium. Go for the smallest stuff first, because that is the stuff that can actually get close to you. And we also want to stop now, because we're going out of our lock range. Our lock range is 169 kilometers, so we'll stop here. They're going to slowly but surely get close to us. We could have actually, we should have stopped before because then we would have been a perfect range to hit them. Now they're not even seem to want to come to us. So what we're going to do here is just approach them a little bit. You can see that they're, they're going at zero meters a second. So we'll be just approaching them. And something that I forgot to say is a very useful is remove Rex from the overview and just sort by distance. This is very good to keep an eye on what, how far stuff is from you so that stuff doesn't get too close to you by accident without you paying attention. So just get a little bit closer and uh, sort by distance. This is actually quite an important thing that I forgot to tell you guys about. Just sort by distance. It, it sometimes will make stuff go a little bit all over the place, but it is very useful for getting stuff to be like, just so that you don't forget that, oh no, suddenly a Dalmavik is like orbiting me at 500. Okay, now we stop here. Since we are in range, stop please, control space, and have our, um, our Kaldari Navy Uranium ready to shoot. There we go. Okay, now we're going to lock up this Kikimura because he's also a small thing. He can go very fast. Now they seem to be wanting to get close to us, so we'll just now pull range from them. All right, good, good, good. We're locking up everything here. The Hospodars and the Liminal ones, they take a little bit more tank. They've got a bit more tank and they're harder to kill. So just keep that in mind. They are a little bit harder to kill. And also, the, as I said before, the Razdenborg are the weak variants, so they take a little bit less time to kill. So this Harrowing guy is going to take less time to kill, or more time to kill than these Razdenborg uh, guys over here. And I think the Hospodar Liminals will take even more time than these, uh, the standard ones over here. The ones with no prefix. Okay, so we just keep pulling range like this, and you, we snipe them. We snipe them like that. It's very simple, very simple. Uh, we just snipe them, keep sniping them. We can even stop here since he's not really approaching us so good. The closer he gets to us, actually, the more damage he'll be doing as well. So we just keep shooting. But if he starts getting like a bit close, like you see he's doing now, we can just approach speed to 100% and click the afterburner on to go a little bit quicker. We can also start locking this other guy up as well. It's uh, not at all complicated, not at all complicated. This is how it works when you go in the trig larvae in a wormhole. Just make sure that they don't get close to you. Because if they do get close to you, or they're starting getting like below 50 kilometers. Don't bother. Don't bother trying to shoot them if they are below 50 kilometers. What you want to do is add location. Type, I don't know, you can make any kind of code name. You can make like S1. Well, that's what I do. I do S1 and then I warp out to my warp out location over there. And then I warp back to S1 at 100 kilometers. And then if I need to warp out again, I'll name it S2, for example. So I'll have multiple bookmarks, S1, S2, S3. And then I'll always make a new uh, bookmark when I warp out. And I warp back to the most recent bookmark, 100 kilometers. Then I'll be 100 kilometers further away from them and then it'll be good okay we can even stop pulling range right now because we don't need to pull range oh wait he almost died right there i thought it was one shot left uh, one thing to note is this this fit is not cap stable with the afterburner on but it is cap stable for quite a long time nine minutes so it's not like you don't have to worry too much about running out of capacity you will be lasting the capacity will be lasting for a long time you can see oh there's a big fleet right here so be a little bit careful, but don't uh, don't hesitate to also use the warp out or go to the warp out location if you ever feel unsafe. And again, take out the small stuff. That's what we want to do. Take out the small stuff that can actually get close to you. The rest of the big stuff like these battle cruisers, they go pretty slow. So you'll be able to snipe them pretty easily. Uh, even the cruisers as well. We can just start shooting these. I'll go for this renewing guy over here. Um, he's getting a little bit closer. See that? He's going a little bit closer. We need to take these Damavix out. There's a lot of them, actually. A lot of them. I'm not used to seeing this many on the wormhole fleets, especially when I've been doing this in a Naga. We can start shooting this guy. And we can see that this Vedmak here is starting to get close to us. But it's okay. It's okay. We can always warp out when we want to. And we'll use the antimatter when we go for this guy later. 
you might even want to switch to the antimatter. Yeah, we'll switch to the antimatter. So we might take a little bit of damage now because he's got missiles that can hit out pretty far. Okay, let's take Kildare and Antimatter. We'll probably go for the Damovic, actually, because he'll actually be able to be killed. This guy probably won't be able to be killed before we have to warp out. So you can see here, now we're taking a bit of damage. So now we probably would want to warp out, but we can also just try to kill this guy. We can have S1 ready, and we can align to the warp out approach location. And let's see if we can kill this Damovic before we have to warp out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, warp out, warp right there, and click Submit. There we go. Now we're in the warp out location. Now what we do is just warp out to S1 100 kilometers. So we'll put the Kaldari Navy Uranium since we will now be at long range. We'll warp to S1 100 kilometers. There we go. And you see here, we took a bit of shield damage, but it was all right because we've got the large shield extended. So we've got a bit, of, a bit of a buffer. So we can still take a little bit of damage for a bit of time. It's not like we're going to get one shotted right here. But we don't, uh, we don't have at all the tanking capabilities to tank for a lot. Just keep that in mind. We might have to warp out again. Look how they're getting closer as well again here. So we'll just start get to pulling some range again. We'll try to see if we can kill this Vedmak right here because he seems to be wanting to get close to us quite quite quickly. And even use the antimatter as well. He seems to be wanting to get close very quickly. We'll have to do an S2 as well. But you just keep doing this really. You just keep doing this. Eventually you'll get some good range pulled and then you'll kill them slowly but surely. We'll approach the warp out location as well. So we have it per perfect alignment so we can warp out straight away. See if we can maybe kill this uh, this Vedmak right here. I don't think we will be, but maybe we will be able to. We might want to warp out now, actually. Yeah, let's warp out. Warp out and click S2. Okay, there's a bit of patience you have to have when doing this. This is very normal. It happens you have to warp out like this. This is not like unusual. You will have to warp out when stuff gets too crazy. Uh, if you were in an Omega clone, as I said before, you would be able to use an MJD and it would be a bit easier. Because you could just MJD and you'll be 100 kilometers out straight away. You won't have to warp in and out like I'm doing right now. But it's all right. It's all right. You can still just go in and out. But you just have to take a little bit more time because you'll be warping instead of using an MJD micro jump drive. So we warp to S2 now, 100 kilometers. And we're now in range again. We can just pull a little bit of range because they see they're approaching us very quickly. This hospital seems very keen on getting us. We can pull range from this guy and he's almost dead as well. I've actually got a booster in here from the daily rewards. That's why I can't use the Frentix booster. It gives me better tracking though, so that's a nice thing for killing these small stuff. But you can see here, the big stuff is very far away now. We might be able to destroy this Hospoda Damovic over here. I don't think, but we'll see. Perhaps if we get some good hits. Because you can see here, when they get closer, they're also harder to hit. So just keep that in mind. See that hit 700 damage. Yeah, we won't be able to. S3 now. And warp out, warp here. But we destroyed that Vedmac, and that was the important thing, because he seemed to be doing quite a bit of damage getting close to us. Reload here, and warp to S3 now at uh, the at 100. And when you start getting a lot of bookmarks like this, then this is where you can press L. Then you can see them, all these bookmarks like this. Closer. There we go, warp now. Warping to S3 at 100 kilometers. Pull range. Again, same thing. 2k volley right there, that was a good volley. Some of the damage base can get very determined to kill you. It's all right. If the uh, you can always get back because you've made a bunch of bookmarks, so you can see the rest of them are 500 kilometers away. You're gonna think, oh, how do I get closer to them? Well, you can just walk back to the bookmarks. You got a bunch of bookmarks all over the place. So you see here, snipe that guy. Okay, good. See so, you now, we could potentially warp to maybe this one right here. This one's 230. This one's so we can warp to this at like 100. We'll be able to take out that cruiser right there. This is this Rasnaborg Vedmak over here we can try to take out. Oh, we don't want to have the afterburn on because that's going to make a line time a bit slower. Warp in here, 100. And you can see here, now we can just pull a little bit of range. The Rasnaborg Vedmak will go a lot quicker down than this previous one we were fighting before. The one that was taking for quite a long time to kill because he was a liminal one. Start shooting with antimatter since it's in pretty close proximity under 100. That's the general rule of thumb. If you have worse skills, obviously, you would have to then use antimatter at uh, lower range to get optimal damage uh, output. You can see here, it's pretty simple, pretty simple. It's just warping in and out. Just re <laughs> it can You can make mistakes, obviously. Say I would, uh, instead of warp to this, uh, instead of 100, I'll warp to this as zero. Then you could, very high likelihood, you could get popped if there's some scrambling one, because they can sometimes have scramblers. Not always. It will say anchoring if there's a scrambler. So if you're extra worried about getting scrambled, you can warp scrambled. You can just go for those guys first, the anchoring guys. Those are the guys that are going to scram you. 
Ooh, Nemesis right here. Some bombers? Oh, they're probably going out from this, uh, uh, that wormhole to do some bombing in Portrait or something. It's quite cool. And also, one thing to know is that sometimes people control you. Sometimes people control you here. Yeah, it's happened to me once because I was doing it in like a water system. There was one jump from Jita. If you are in a system that's a bit less populated, a bit further from Jita, less likely that you get trolled. But what happened was that um, I was doing this right here. And then some guy was trying to bump me, so it was harder to warp out. And some guy was also just shooting my uh, the same guy when he was failing to bump me because the Naga is actually a lot more nimble than a Raven. I tried using a Raven before. This is a lot more nimble. So the bumping wasn't working, but he was then, what he did was he shot my MTU. I had two MTUs on the grid, so he actually managed to pop one, unfortunately. He took the loot from one of them, but I managed to recover the second one. So just keep in mind, you can sometimes have trolls here that try to, you know, wreck you or piracy or whatever. You just got to have patience. Don't try shooting them because they're often in a PvP fit. They're going to absolutely wreck you if they get up close. And here, speaking of MTUs, I should have deployed another MTU here because you can see here now, the MTUs have a range of 125 kilometers. So I won't be able to, they won't be able to scoop all these wrecks here. So I'll probably go to S2 and deploy an MTU there. That'll be a good spot. Just make sure your MTUs, they're further than 125 kilometers away from each other. Otherwise, they will scoop each other's wrecks. So if they're further than 125 kilometers away, it'll be all right. They will not scoop each other's wrecks because then it'll happen to like one pull. If there was one too close, it'll pull, it'll pull these wrecks that is already collected here. I think that this wormhole siege is soon over, actually, because there, there's quite a few ships that spawn in. This Kikimura right here is taking a bit of time to destroy. He's a Hospodar. Oh, more. A Renimal Rodiva. Caracals. Probably fleets going into that wormhole right there. I get worried when I see people warping in on grid, because just the last time I had people warp in on grid, it was people who wanted to troll me. But you'll often find people here who are, like doing stuff just through the wormholes like i've seen explorers come in and out of the wormholes but a good thing to know is that there's a high likelihood of people who try to salvage stuff steal stuff from you they do get targeted by the triglavians so just keep that in mind as well that they have a bit of risk on their side as well it's not that they're completely risk free oh this guy is getting really fast look at that guy 3k a second i have to speed up here start shooting that damovic who's trying to get in close hot you can start kill this uh, this vedmak actually because he is He's almost dead, just one more shot. But he is getting close, this guy. So he's getting 3k a second at one point. They they have a bit of like strange with their movement speed. They sometimes go very fast, sometimes they go very slowly, like a 400 meters a second. I think it's that they're turning off their MWDs, on and off their MWDs. One thing to also note is that it'll be a bit annoying. Oh, Hospodars, they take longer to kill. The Liminals, they take longer to kill. But I find that in general, they actually drop better loot as well. Especially the, the actual loot from the wrecks. You can see there's quite a few wrecks accumulating right now. Well, I can. I'm, my guess is that from this total fleet I've been just killing right here, it'll drop about 60, 50 to 60 million isk worth of loot, including the salvage. So you can potentially get a lot more as well if you get these Triglavian holographic transcribers. They're more likely to get from the Hospodars. So they can be worth 13 million each. Oh, we need to warp out now. Raznabok starving Vedmac is pretty close. Oh, warp out to this guy. S4. There we go. I didn't notice that. That can happen sometimes that you just, you don't uh, pay attention. Like I did right there. And you can take a lot of damage right here. Ooh. Yeah, the afterburner uh, is going to go. There we go. Okay. That was close. I didn't pay attention right there. I was, the, you need to pay attention to this. Just make sure they don't get close in range. Okay. I'll up to S4 now at, at 400, at 100 kilometers. Kill him fast as well. Since he's a Raznaburg, he'll die very quickly because he's uh, weak. Weaky week. Oh, he's actually quite far away. We'll go with the uh, uranium. You see here, there's just uh, it's not too hard. It's you just make it's just a case of understanding how to make bookmarks. Really, uh, that's all it is. And I really should put an MTU. You. you can also use the wrecks as well. You can walk to the wrecks. Just make sure that you know they have to be 150 kilometers away. Otherwise, you can't walk to them. That's just something to keep in mind. I doubt they'll spawn any more after this. I think this is the end of the wormhole siege right here. There we go. You see 4.5 million isk right there. That means the wormhole siege is over. They won't spawn in anymore. When that tick comes in, they won't spawn in anymore after that. That 4.5 billion is only seen uh, in these wormhole sieges. You won't see it in these normal scouting fleets. Now will be a bit of a salvage operation after this. They'll take a bit of time, but you'll get some good loot from this. And now that we've sieged the wormhole, there's more Triglavians fleets that can spawn in, like around the system at Celestials, these planets. There's a dam of it coming quite close here, so we're going to warp out. There we go. He managed to get very close, that Triglavian Damovic over there. 
Oh, he's getting closer even now. I have to warp out again? That Dama is really determined on getting me. Go to S6 right here. We might even have to make another one, third one, for this one Damovic who's going crazy on us. He's almost dead now, I think, though. There we go, 1k. Now, just one more hit. Come on, just one more hit. No, we're going to have to make another one. Warp out. Because if he gets too close, we can't hit them. They're, they're just going to be... The transverse is not going to be optimal. Let's kill this guy now. Only one more shot. Come on. Try to get a good hit. There we go. Finally, that guy died. I have to snipe this Damovic. He's just eating himself right at me. Getting sniped in the face. <laughs> okay, there's only two ships now. Can probably warp to maybe this one at... I'm going to warp to this one maybe at 70. No, right. Warp it in 70. So now this drop has expired that I had when I logged in today with this account. That's one more hit. Bopped. Okay. And then we'll go for this last Vedmac right here. We can actually just warp here to the center of these wrecks. So we can place our MTU. So we just get that done uh, straight away. We can take care of this Vedmac from long range. It's all right. Let's warp there and then get uh, the second MTU ready to deploy. And the rest of these wrecks, they're a little bit further away. We can just warp to them since we've got all these bookmarks all over the place. So it's really useful in that regard. So we can just dump, we can put some uranium in right here since he's in. We're going to be so far away. Deploy our MTU right here. There we go. Let's start shooting him. And we can even align to the restock because that's where we're going to go here and refit to salvage fit. There we go. Now we go to the restock. We dock up here and then I've got this fit for salvaging. So the way that's why we put it in our cargo hole. So we can just right click and fit. And you see here, we've got the salvage fit now. We're going to walk to our warp out location again. You can see here on the scan, you can see some uh, triglavins here. And we'll be using the scan to find the uh, Rasnaborg roaming fleets later. So there we go. Now we've got all these mobile tractor units in sight. We can just walk to them. Get our hard earned loot. So here's the first one. I'm going to see what the NPCs dropped because they drop both good stuff and they also got the salvage. So yeah, six million worth here. And then we'll see what the salvage gives right here. We salvage super fast with this ship. And if we add direct to overview, we see that there's tons more wrecks. So this is just one small portion of them that we salvage very fast in this. We've got eight salvages. There we go. Salvage a little pile right here. See how much we've got from the little pile. As I said before, there's so many more wrecks. There's way more than just this. So we'll see here. I've got this filter that you can get from looking at my character. Invasion loot. So with that little pile of wrecks, we've got 13 million. So AC facey. We've got my character. And you can see this invasion loot. Just click here and there's yes. And then you'll have this filter right here, which you can then filter out to the loot here. Okay. Let's see now if we can we can maybe walk to some of the wrecks that are too far away for us. So one million dropped right here. Just some loot, and then we'll Get some salvage as well. Hospodars tend to give good uh, Triglavian survey data, which is uh, this stuff right here. They're trying to drop more of this. Yeah, clean up here takes a, uh, take quite a bit of time. And it could even be worth to go in and, like a dedicated salvage ship with like tracked beams and everything. But here, everything is kept into one ship. Could even be worth to have like an MWD or something so you can cruise around a bit quicker as well. I've not got that fitted right here. Then we'll be warped to these that are furthest away here. Take them. Just warp the ones that are furthest away so you're tr more, more attractive you need to work less. See some of these wrecks are close to each other. You can just go and grab them. Probably be worth to just put an NWD on here. I haven't really felt the need to have it before, but in this case, they've spread out by quite a big margin. Usually, if there's a lot of uh, big stuff, then they don't spread out this much because they will just be moving very slowly. Or if there's a lot of like tiny little frigates that are not hospitals, then they'll die very quickly and all be in the same spot. What we can do here is actually just put another mobile tractor unit. The one we picked up before and just pull in everything that's nearby. Now this is within 125 kilometers of the other one. So you just want to watch out so this thing does not pull in the ones that have already been pulled in by the other one. Because it will do that. If it gets to be, it always pulls in the stuff that's closest first. You could even have three mobile tractor units, but the cargo capacity on the Naga is a little bit limiting for three of them. But you could definitely put three of them as well. Now that there's only this wreck here, we want to click up the MTU because otherwise it'll start pulling in wrecks from this one over here. 
So there we go. We've cleaned up this side. Now we can clean up this side as well by putting another MTU over here, right here. And we can even just dump the MTU and then warp to the other one and salvage the ones in this or other one. Be a bit tactical, you know, to speed up your time. The main skill really is being able to kite these guys properly. And afterwards, how quick you are salvaging is just a bonus cherry on top to increase your maximum is power. So you've got 20 million here because we've got one of these Triglavian holographics transcribers in this MTU. So it's pretty good. These things are worth quite a bit. They're a bit of like a rare drop. That's just the loot. We can have potentially more salvage as well. Oh, Sonasis, please don't Sonasis, steal my salvage. There we go. Salvage pretty much all these wrecks in this empty right here. And the second one I placed a little bit further away has already pulled in everything. That's really good. So you kind of work efficiently so that you salvage while the MTUs pull stuff in. We can warp to this one now. Salvage the remaining wrecks and see the grand total of what we got from this whole wormhole fleet right here. There we go, job completed. Let's see what we got in total. Total was 83 million. So some decent isk right there. And the majority of the value is from these. And actually, these, we didn't get so many of these because you can get uh, quite a bit of these Triglavian survey data. But the majority is from these. You see here, 47 million from this. And then we also got some filaments as well that are worth quite a bit and these things. Then we also got this one right here, one of these guys. You can sometimes get more, but these are a little bit more rare to get then you can see just one of them amongst all these ones right here and i think you can get more of these i've in my experience got more of these from a wormhole fleet so 83 million right there pretty easy right there it was not like something too crazy it was just a matter of warping in and out really so now that we've destroyed all these guys we can just delete all these bookmarks right here don't need to have them here and also delete this warp out location right here and we'll go back to the restock and then we'll just refit to combat again and i'll show you guys how you hunt the Raznavort guys these roaming ones right here because you can see on the scan that they're these roaming ones because now that we destroyed the wormhole they can spawn in more of these roaming ones and they're going to be a bit more bigger than the classical ones we saw there without the wormhole fleet there but it's exactly the same concept you just warp in, make a warp out at like uh, like a below 10,000 kilometers, and then you just warp in and out whenever you have problems. And you can you try to snipe the snipe whatever gets close to you, really. Okay, so we can just take our filter right here, put all this in here, and then also make sure we keep the mobile tractor units, and we can put all these meta modules that were dropped because some of these modules dropped from the Triglavians, and we can just refit now to combat. Simple as that. Fit. And I'll say we need some ammo because we obviously have used ammo, so we won't have as much as in the fit. So now I'll show you guys how to find the roaming fleets. They're pretty simple. You just have to make a filter first for them. So the way you do that is just go on the overview, click over on settings. And then when you go on like one of them, you can go on mining, for example, it doesn't matter. And then you can go on tab presets and then just deselect all and then type Triglavian entities click here and then you save this and then save this as like triglavians now i've already got one so i won't do that but we will then just take this to the old mining tab i had here before there we go it's a nice reset so then when you save that filter you go here click here triglavians and you see there's triglavians so that's how you then find them like this on the d scan and the way to find these very quickly is have the max range on and put it to five degrees and then go on the warp to tab or wherever you have planets and then just select planets select planets and scan them now, if you can't find them in planets then you could maybe try looking at something else like a customs office and what do you know we see them there so usually you can just do on the planets because the customs office is so close to the planet but since the, we're uh, we're so close to the planet there's actually a difference so if we're doing the five degree on this planet it's different from doing it here but if we we're very far away then if we were to like do a five degree on the planet it would include this customs office since the way the cone works so you can always check customs offices and then we'll walk to this now we'll have to make a same thing as before okay same thing make a warp out warp out like this and then we'll warp to this uh, 100 kilometers and make sure we have our invent uh, inventory ready to put the mobile tractor unit. And then that is really what it is. It's just nothing too crazy. So you don't just keep an eye here. Warp out. There we go. Good. So we've got the warp out location here. And now we will deploy our mobile tractor unit and do the same thing. Do the exact same thing. Go to the warp out location, approach. We're going to snipe the small stuff. Make sure you orbit by distance and put the ammo. It's quite important to have the ammo. 
and we'll then continue going here. Oh, we'll go for this tangling Zama right here. He's trying to shoot us right here. Pop him, and you can see they're starting to get a little bit close now. A bit close, it's okay. We can just warp out whenever we want to. Just stay aligned, that's the key point, stay aligned. And don't get, let them get too close. Tangling Dama takes a bit of time to kill since he's a tangling without Razna Borg prefix, so he's a bit stronger than the standard ones. Okay, we should warp out right here. S1. And then we'll warp back in. We see there's anchoring guys. Those guys are actually quite important to kill because they can warp scram you and keep you from warping out if they were to somehow get on top of you. So make sure you kill those guys first. Okay, go to now S1 at 100. And it's the same thing, the same thing. Just snipe these guys and wreck them and then refit to your salvage uh, fit and then salvage the loot. Just make sure you don't put your uh, MTU at the customs office because they respawn at the same location. So that's why it's always good to put them out 100 kilometers like I'm doing. Just where you, when you warp into 100 kilometers. Unfortunately, we're going to probably have to warp out right now. So align to this. And what? Oh, there we go. We wrecked that guy there, so that was good. S2 now. Alright, so what happened right now was just that my GPU driver crashed. So luckily I was able to retrieve the footage that was recorded because that would be a lot of footage that would have gone to waste right there. And we can see if we can start sniping some more of these guys in this Raznaborg fleet right here. But it's the same thing, you guys can get it. Like It's the same thing as I explained in the wormhole fleet right there. You just go in and out, S1, S2, S3. Oh, wait, no, wait, they're not here. Oh, don't, no, don't, don't, don't kill me now. <laughs> Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. <laughs> Look at them. I, I, thought, I thought they had gone back to their original location, but they had not. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Let's see if we can make an S3 bookmark when we just warp out. Go on, yeah, there we go. That was very deadly right there. We could have actually lost our ship right there if we had warped on the wrong people. I just saw them like that, and I thought it looked like that they had uh, gone to the, like, or gone back to the original location. Let's see now. We're here at S3. They are a little bit too far away, though, so it's a bit annoying in that regard. Hmm. How do we get there? Okay, I want to get back there. This is this can be annoying when you don't, like, for example, I crashed, so I didn't have the ability to make another bookmark right here, but this can be a little bit annoying when they're in this location and you can't really get to them because they're too far, away, like they're too close to you or whatever. But we could do is actually just warp to this mobile track unit and gun down these, uh, the, these guys here with the antimatter since they're pretty close. We can just there anyway, not any scramblers. So we could probably do that. It could is a bit of a risky maneuver. I wouldn't recommend you doing this, but it's what I see is necessary here to take advantage of the amount of distance these Damaviks have covered. Okay, we'll go to the warp out location again. Approach, start attacking these guys. And they're very far away. This is going to take a bit of time for those Damaviks to get close to us. This is pretty cool. You see how they're like very far away like this. You can get creative with the, how you like, use the bookmarks. Just be careful when you're doing a bit of like uh, cowboy maneuvers like I'm doing just right now. I, it would be just safest just to probably quit this site and just find a new fleet because it's very easy to find these fleets right here. And then if you wait a bit, they'll despawn. They will, like They will not be here forever. And one thing to be very careful is that we want, they can spawn and there will be a likelihood of them spawning and again a new fleet, like right on top of it. That's why yeah, it's very important for you to stay aligned out here where they are like, uh, you know, like I'm got closer now that I've gone to this more attractive unit. If we keep aligning out here, we'll be able to warp out straight away when they eventually decide to get in range uh, respawn a new one sometimes they could don't spawn in new ones though so just keep that in mind sometimes it's just a single wave but they do from time to time respawn and sometimes they can respawn a lot like they just keep respawning and no stop no stop in sight that's good you take out those uh, dracovacs right there snipe them like that and we can now wreck these uh small stuff that's at optimal range for us to take out you can even use afterburner to get to them a bit quicker but there's a lot of uh, nasty stuff here because they're not Razna box. These guys look, they're in fact all not Razna box. So these whole small, these small stuff is going to take quite a bit of time to destroy. So we're going to be wanting to align to the warp out location. Start shooting this guy straight away. You see, they're, they're 
not the easiest to hit, and they also have more tank as well. Since they are the standard variants, they're not Rasnaborg variants right here. Let's shoot as much of these guys as we can before we have to warp out. But this is risky since we've got these anchoring guys here. They're going to scram us when they get in range. Stop popping them like that. Approach the warp out location. And the warp out straight away. You see there's an anchoring down if they keep them close to us actually. Just to keep shooting though. Should be alright. Okay, take out this kicking more. Just make sure they don't get significantly close to you. But the anchoring guys should die pretty quickly. We walk now. We are not taking any more chances like this. To make an S4 there just to see if we could potentially make it a better bookmark location. Okay, where are these guys now? See if there's which bookmark is close to these guys. Got this S2 right here. Oh, now they're deciding to warp off anyway. So that happens sometimes. When you warp out a little bit too much in and out, they just decide to warp off. But that's alright. We can just go there and salvage our Rex. We go there, refit to the... Uh, the salvage fit for the naga and then just you know loot our loot <laughs> simple as that yeah from that small encounter i had here those future glavians are sniped this is how much i this guy got 26 million right there so you can see that you can get sometimes very good isk from just killing a future glavians when the salvage is good so i hope you guys enjoyed this guide right here yeah i can imagine this is a good thing if you want to think that abyss is a bit a little bit too scary and it's also a very good thing for alpha clones in general to do in the abyss you're quite limited with alpha clone stuff and this is also a very like cheap setup only 125 million uh abyss gila for example costs much more than this this is very 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 dirt cheap and doesn't require a whole lot of skills either to use it's really just a case of having more skills makes you doing this a lot quicker and again this guy here is an alpha clone uh, he's not well he's an omega clone but he's only trained alpha clone skills so it's basically he's like a test platform for me to do a good simulation of uh, alpha clone skills let's just dump our loot here in the station do that and put our total loot pool right here See here, total loot pool is 100 million, something like that, 109 million. And we've got some meta modules as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video right here. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.